Welcome to the Rajamanan Stadium, Bangkok, for the S1 Championships, a pyramid tournament to celebrate the birthday of Mr. Songchai Ratunaban. Well, the first quarter final coming up. S. Saw Plionchit versus Jean Charles Skabowski. Plionchit of Thailand, Skabowski of France. Well, this tournament. All fighters wearing yellow shorts. Their uh, corners are denoted by the color of the waistbands and stripes. So, blue fighter to the left of our screens, Surya Saw Plionchit, 25 years old, 175 centimeters tall. Listen to the fight record 69 fights, 14 losses, 2 draws. So, impressive, impressive record for the Thai fighter, Saw Plionchit. Jean-Charles Skabowski of France. Well, we now know from Super League promoter that Jean-Charles has signed a Super League deal and will fight in Germany. We're going to show that live on Eurosport Saturday, October the 23rd. But Skabowski, 28 years old, 177 centimetres, 61 fights, 11 losses, one win. But listen, is this going to be the difference? 43 KOs, Skabowski can finish his opponent. So, he's the red fighter on our right, denoted by the stripe on the waistband and the stripe down the side of the boxing shorts. So, Plionchit to the left of our screens, Skabowski to the right. Well, literally thousands of people packed into this, the Rajamanan Stadium on the 4th of March for an amazing night of boxing. Mr. Song Chai Ratanuban, the foremost WMC member in Thailand, celebrating his birthday with this, the S1. S1, you may ask yourself, well, I don't want hundreds of emails <laughs> chastising me for saying this because it's on the official literature. The S1 is a humorous reference to the K1. So, the show organized with the WMC to bring international Muay Thai into the heart of the homeland. And the Thais incredibly excited about the international card. Well, while I'm rambling on, Jean-Charles Skabowski making inroads into Plionchit. Full Muay Thai rules. I won't waste my time telling you what is allowed. I'll just tell you what isn't allowed. Well bite, a stab to the eyes and spitting. You can't stick out your tongue and you can't strike with your head. So for all hardcore MT fans, this is it. The Blue Ribbon debate. Everything allowed. Full MT rules and Jean-Charles Skabowski making inroads to Plionchit. Plionchit still composed. Responding in kind. Lovely teep there. This is our first quarter final in this eight man elimination tournament. Three three minute rounds. With the red flash on his shorts, Jean Charles Skabowski of France. With the blue flash on the shorts. Surya Saw Plionchit of Thailand. There's some great boxing here, some good hard digs. Plionchit very relaxed, fighting Southport, but very calm, very composed, as is usual for the Thais. Under a lot of pressure, I would suspect the Thai fighters tonight. We've got two Thai fighters. Nuang Trakon, Pumung Ubon, and the fighter you're seeing now, Surya Saw Plionchit. 
in front of the home crowd here at the Rajamanan Stadium, one of the two main stadiums for Thai boxing, the other of course being the Lumpini. The Thais don't come to these events to lose, so they're under a bit of pressure now, both the Thai fighters. Surya saw Plionchit. Straight back at it as we go to round two. With the Thai fighter with an unorthodox stance. But that's not causing any difficulty for Skabowski. Skabowski can hit hard and with that 43 KO record on his CV you can see how that came about I mean he's going for gold each time trying to come in over the top of the guard of the Thai fighter well as I said to you Skabowski signed up for Super League we aim to bring you the best in martial arts entertainment here on British Eurosport. You get the lot here. We've got MT, we've got kickboxing, we've got K1, we've got Super League. We also have sumo. Notwithstanding the judo and taekwondo from Olympic events. And there's the left. Oh my goodness, it was a peach. It's a knockdown. Well, where did that come from? Plioncic didn't see that coming at all. The chin was exposed and Skabowski planted one straight on the button and down Plioncic went. In fact, he did very well to recover. They're very, very resilient Thai fighters. They don't come here to get knocked down, but look at Skabowski now, so relaxed. Keeping Plioncic at range. And the smile there says it all. That smile on Skabowski's face denotes, I've got you once, I'm going to get you again. And there is a look of, well, surprise on Plioncic's face because that left side is so exposed and Skabowski's taking advantage of it there you go, left hook, right hook there's a straight left, he's chasing the tie around the ring and the tie is really taking some big bangs here and it almost seems as if there's no guard for the head that is very reckless of Plioncic against a man that has a 43 KO record on his CV and look at that, beaten to the punch every time Skabowski, not a care in the world. Oh, beautiful front tip. The front kick came up from nowhere. Knee up to the chest. He extended it right out. And that banged again on the cheek of Plioncic. Well, the slow-mo will show it all. Downstairs, upstairs. And look at that left. Absolutely no defence to it. Plioncic, well, wore that all the way home. Well, a worried corner for Surya saw Plioncic. Great record, 69 fights, 14 wins. Uh, excuse me. I'm getting a correction on that. 69 fights, 14 losses. Two draws. Surya saw Plioncic. So, great record. And he's not going to want to throw that away lightly in front of a home crowd here in Bangkok against a non tie And MT fighters, well, across Europe, particularly in the UK, will know just how tough it is to dispose of a tie fighter. This is the third round. The final round. This is when Thai fighters reserve that bit of energy to show the judges 
just a little bit of razzmatazz at the end. That's what the judges want to see. They want to see the aggression. They want to see the activity stepped up in the last round. The last round counts for so much. Plioncic knows this, and he stepped up to the mark. Now, Will Skabowski raises pace. I suspect he doesn't have too much work to do because the score from the knockdown will probably have done enough now at this stage. But you cannot rest on your laurels, not in an MT bout. And the tie's right behind Plioncic. Shouting every time a strike comes from the tie fighter. Skowalski looks a little bit tired to me. Threw an awful lot of leather. Connected there with the left. So just under two minutes to go. This has been action all the way. It really has been top class. Skowalski threw an awful lot of leather that, that connected so well. Tie fighter scoring away with the kicks downstairs. But not enough to cause any problems for Skowalski. Great recovery from the tie. Looks strong. Looks fresh. But Skowalski, steady worker, goes about this job of work at his pace and when he digs look at that he really rocks the head of the tie even from a relatively short punch there the kick taking the tie right off balance left right combination banged right home well we've got half a minute of this fight to go now this is the first quarter final from this, the S1 at the Rajamanan Stadium in Bangkok. And it's Jean-Charles Skabowski of France, who really has romped home to victory. Seemingly effortless. And he took the fight out of the tie with that short left hook. But down the tie, and that's it, it's all over. And respectful bows, but Plioncic knows he's not done enough. Great tactical fight from Skabowski. Took the fight to the tie all the way. There wasn't a second when Skabowski wasn't throwing leather. And the decision, a formality. Well, quarterfinal number two here at the Rajamanan Stadium, the S1. This is a fighter all MT fans want to see. John Wayne Parr of Australia performing the John Wayne Y Crew. This is his speciality. The Y Crew, of course, is a dance to honor instructors from the past and of the present, but also to psych out your opponent. So a little bit of uh, Australasian Antipodean activity going on there. Jean Wayne Parr doing his own Y crew. Jean Wayne Parr, 27 years old, 177 centimeters, 48 fights, 14 wins. And just to let you know that uh, Jean Wayne Parr, a seasoned Super League fighter, He's going to be coming live to you on British Eurosport here on Fight Club when we broadcast the next Super League event from Germany on Saturday, October the 23rd. Jean-Wayne Parr, Mohamed Magomedov, Uzbekistan, the blue fighter on the left-hand side of our screens. All the fighters in this tournament, as I've mentioned earlier, will fight with yellow trunks. But uh, we will denote them by the color of the waistband and the color of the stripe on the shorts. So, Mohamed Magomedov, Uzbekistan. We've seen Magomedov fight before, in fact. Uh, 20 years old, 186 centimeters, has the height and the reach advantage 
a 10 centimetre almost reach advantage and height advantage over Wayne Park. 21 fights, four wins. Well, he's so revered, John Wayne Parr, amongst MT fighters all over the world, not only in Australia, not only here in the UK, but also in Thailand. And you can see the full Thai rules, the elbow is allowed, and the elbow coming down on the top of John Wayne Parr's head. And there you see the elbow being used to very good effect. He's being warned by the ref, but uh, it is allowed. And a little bit of confusion there from Magomedov. Oh, great right from John Wayne Parr, straight through the guard. Oh, answered with another right from Magomedov. Well, this is really an empty extravaganza for Muay Thai fans. I hope you're enjoying this. Nice inside kick from Magomedov, had the reach, connected downstairs with the calf muscle of Jean Wayne Park. Jean Wayne Park holds the left leg out and covers up very well. Great, great Muay Thai stance. Magomedov more of orthodox. A deeper boxing stance. Smidgen of blood on the cheek of Magomedov. From where I am, I can't see whether it's Magomedov's or Jean Wayne Parr's. But we've less than a minute to go in this second quarter final. Oh, and John Wayne Parr put together a great combination there. In fact, the blood is from the top of John Wayne Parr's head. And that is from an injury, I would suspect, from the downward elbow strikes we saw from Magomedov earlier in the round when John Wayne Parr was against the ropes. And um, this is what MT fighters have been saying all along. Oh be their spokesperson and say it now that full rules Muay Thai is the toughest toughest ring sport there is and this is the best example of it because you can see the damage that elbow strikes can do Jean Wayne Parr touches the glove of Magomedov but he's not happy because uh, the well overzealous use of the elbow strike look at those I mean Full forearm smashes going in, and down comes the elbow there. The referee trying to intervene, but it is allowed. The only fouls, according to the rules of S1, are biting, a stab to the eyes, spitting at your opponent, sticking out your tongue, and to strike with the head. There's an interesting uh, rule here as well, using unsuitable words during the fight. So, short break here between the first and the second. Back to the action. Jean Wayne Parr of Australia versus Mohamed Magomedov. This, the S1 from Rajamanan Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. Eight fighters. There's two ties on this card. We've seen one. Surya saw Pleonchit. He went out to Jean-Charles Kabowski. But there are fighters from Europe. Ole Lawson to come up. Petr Polak of the Czech Republic. And Magnum Sakai of Japan, as well as Jean Wayne Parr of Australia in action here with the red flash on the shorts and he's really getting to work on Mohamed Magomedov And I have to say, I think for fight sports in general, I'm not overjoyed to see the excessive use of uh, violence within 
a match, but lots of people complain that uh, full Muay Thai rules are difficult as a, a spectator sport to be televised, but at this level, you just have to see the class of these athletes, their poise. It really is a joy to witness the level of skill that these athletes are showing. And really, at this level, there's nothing scrappy, there's nothing untoward about what these men are doing. This really is the pinnacle and epitome of top class Muay Thai fight action. Magomedov sneaking a little right there, just kissing John Wayne Parr as it crosses. You can see the reach advantage Magomedov has, using it to good advantage, trying to keep John Wayne Parr out on the edge. Trying to frustrate John Wayne. <laughs> I've said it before, whenever Parr is fighting, um, like our own Pele Reed, whose father was a fan of the great Pele during the 70s, the footballer, and named his son accordingly. I suspect that uh, John Wayne Park would have a similar story to tell us regarding his name. But look at the action there from Magomedov. Well, neither of these two men have come here to play. It's full-on fight action right from the beginning. Both of them bringing it on. It's probably very difficult at this stage, I would suspect, to make a decision. So we know that Thai judges like to see in the third round the ante stepped up. They like to see, in a close call like this, both fighters really, really step up a gear and entertain the crowd and show us the skills in the final round. Well, this is the third and final round. So it's up to Magomedov and Wayne Parr now to bring it on. There's the bell. John Wayne Parr late to the centre. They've got a lot of work to do, both men. I suspect they realise that. This indeed is a tough competition, the S1. It is an elimination competition, so the tougher the bouts you have in the earlier rounds, the more it will tell on you as you proceed through the rankings. Well, they're really going for this now. It's all or nothing. What will make the difference between these two fighters for the judges? Well, the level of conditioning and fitness is just apparent with these two men. Muay Thai with full Muay Thai rules is a serious business and the level of conditioning, well, superb. John Wayne Parr, of course, uh, we can get a close-up of that tattoo on his chest. It says uh, in Thai, Boon Chu.
Well, we've got over 10,000 Muay Thai fans squeezed into the Rajamanan Stadium for this competition. It's the debut of the great new Muay Thai promotion, the S1 World Championship. Prize money for this competition, 1 million baht. I don't know what the current exchange rate is. You can crunch that math yourself. But uh, obviously, enough incentive there to spur these two right through to the last bell. Difficult call. Jean-Wayne Parr holds his hand up confidently. I would say he's probably done enough to take it. We'll wait for the official recognition of the winner. And it's par. Well, don't go away because we've got some amazing MT action coming for you here at the S1. We're going to have a short commercial break. I'll speak to you in a few. Alan Larson, Jack Welcome back to Denmark. Fight Club. I'm Will Vanders. This is the S1 Muay Thai tournament from the Rajamanan Stadium in Bangkok. Well, it's a real fest for MT fans. Ole Larson of Denmark. Ladies and gentlemen, the and Nuang Trakon Po Muang Ubon of Thailand. Mr. Narong Tanajan. Gamakan Po Ham Bon Wete. And uh, <laughs> MT fans, please excuse my pronunciation of uh, Mr. Nuantrakon Poor Mwangobon's name. Um, said there by somebody Thai, and obviously the pronunciation tripping off the tongue. Ole Larson, 26 years of age, 177 centimeters, 20 fights, 6 losses. 12 KOs. Larson with the blue flash on the s and stripe on the trunks. Fighting out of the blue corner on our left. Nuang Trakon Poor Muang Ubon. 25 years of age. 179 centimeters. 55 whites. Fights. 66 wins. Denoted by the red flash. Tough, tough fighter. Nuang Trakon. This will be a real, real battle. It's going to be a tough fight. Ole Larson, tough customer indeed. Again, another Super League fighter. The tie goes down. I think it's a slip. Nuantra Kanpur, classic MT form. Larson trying to find an opening. And uh, I've just been corrected here about uh, the full MT rules at this S1 competition. And confusion has reigned because the official rules do not stipulate this. However, I'm advised here that apparently the elbow can only be used in the final. It's not allowed to be used until the final bout. Now, the official rules do not denote the elbow as a foul. So, just to update you on that, that will probably account for the fact that uh, Mohamed Magomedov was penalised by the referee for using the elbow against John Wayne Park. And uh, a lot of MT fighters will be saying, and even though he used the elbow, and used it to good effect there was no complaint from John Wayne Park because uh, as you can see they're rough they're tough these MT boys Ole Larson very very tough customer indeed one of the Super League stars And I just remind you again that uh, John Wayne Park 
and Jean-Charles Skobowski will both be appearing from Germany live here on British Eurosport when we bring you the Super League on Saturday, October the 23rd. And, uh, oh, a good exchange just at the end of the bout there. Slow-mo will give us uh, a little insight into anything we may have missed in the action. Oh, nice hold there by Lawson. Use that to good effect. The TIE fighter trying to impose his will on Lawson. Lawson, too tough a cookie. And as I said, the pressure is on for these Thai fighters because they're in front of a home crowd here in the Rajamanan Stadium, second only to the Lumpini, in front of a capacity crowd. I mean, 10,000 people squeezed into this arena. Just to advise you of some upcoming K1 Beast next week, Monday the 20th here on Fight Club. Plus the event all British fight fans have been waiting for. Tearing it up at the Roundhouse Theatre in London. UK K1 champion Gary Smiler Turner versus Michael McDonald, the current USA K1 champion. Plus some great victories from some great Brit fighters. Marty Cox gives us a boxing lesson. Jason Vassilo, a first round KO. And Simon Dimitri slugs it out for an international title. A great, great promotion from Tim Isley, showing us all what a great promotion looks like. That's all coming to you next week here on Fight Club. And what better start to the week. Monday night is Fight Club. So, if you get the chance, join us and be here. Well, the action hotting up. Ole Larsen of Denmark with the blue flash against Nguang Trakon Poor Muang Ubon of Thailand. Larsen really working hard to find a way in. The tie doesn't like it. The tie doesn't like it one bit. And he didn't like that one little bit either. And you can see there's a whole different air about Nuang Takon Poor Muang Ubon now, realizing that uh, Ole Lawson, a real force to be reckoned with. Lawson on the inside, using the knees. The Thai fighter keeping his weight on the ground as he uses the knee strike, but Ole Lawson managing to jump up in the air and bring that knee to make contact on the floating rib, on the waist there. And you can see the red marks beginning to show on the TIE fighter. Lawson, look, jumping up and bringing that knee strike in. Beautiful. So, full Muay Thai rules here. The upending and throwing, the clinching, the knee strikes. The only thing that's not allowed... Oh, great inside thigh kick there from... Lawson. The only thing that's not allowed is the use of the elbow, but that is allowed during the final bout, which actually, for your information, is a five-rounder. The qualifiers, the quarterfinals, the semi-finals, they're all three three-minute rounds. Well, Nuantrakon Poor, Muang Ubon, not really finding an answer for Ole Lawson. Front, teep, front kick going in there. Means nothing to Lawson. Look at the six pack. These boys are fighting fit. And it's a great joy to bring you this S1 competition. Uh, not because it's a great competition, but because it uh, really gives us a rounded showing now of all martial sports. And for a long time, I know that uh, MT fans have been saying, when are we going to get some more Muay Thai? Well, you're getting it now. Uh, we need support for this. So if you like what you see, let us know. Because we're trying hard to bring you the best 
in Marshall Entertainment. And British Eurosport, I would venture, is succeeding in that. With K1, Super League, this the S1. Not to mention the many other events that we bring. If you want it, support it. Well, furious, furious activity in both corners. This is the third and final. I've actually got Larson ahead. But that could be because I'm biased and I'm not seeing what Nuantra Konpur Muang Ubon is doing. But Larson working well on the inside. So this is it, the third and final. And this has really been a battle. An awesome display of talent from both fighters. And it's very, very close. It could go either way. So, will the tie now bring something extra special? to the party. Only Larson's got a very fast left there. That whizzed by the nose of the TIE fighter. Oh, some great kicks. Larson saying bring it on. But I suspect he doesn't really mean it. Well, the TIE now showing us the class. Great clean strikes there. Lawson up to mischief on the inside. Oh, missed opportunity from the tie there. Connected with the jaw of Lawson. No power in it. Well, Lawson very late with that. That had a second-class postage stamp on it. The tie wasn't even there to receive the mail. Well, less than two minutes to go. The workload hasn't shifted up enough, I would suspect, for the Thai judges. If anything, Nuantra Konpur Muang Ubon from Thailand is looking the classier of the two here. And that's what the judges want to see in this third and final round. Lawson still making good connections, still posing problems. So less than a minute to go. Interesting to see how the judges will score this. Look at the potential power there from Lawson. Deep stance. Throwing a lot of weight behind those shots. Sadly, they're not connecting. Front teak there from the tie, the front push took Lawson off balance. Wow, this really has been a battle of wills. And I think it's safe to say that Nuantra Konpur Muang Ubon really surprised here by the performance of the European. And that's it. So a sporting touch of gloves. Lawson lifts his hands. But I'll be honest with you. It would be very, very difficult to tell who, who, who the winner is. So, the fourth quarter final here. What an interesting bout this will be. Ladies and Petra gentlemen, the Polak of the Czech contest, Republic, Mr. Samad, 27 Jan years Boy, old, 20 fights, six wins. 
คุณสมาจันทคล้อยครับ His opponent from Japan, and so very rare to see a Japanese MT fighter, Magnam Sakai. So not a lot of history here. Petr Polak, 20 wins, six losses. Magnum Sakai, 11 wins, three losses, one draw, eight stoppages there. So Sakai of Japan, a big hitter. It's on the CV. Which way this will go will be very, very interesting indeed. So scheduled for three. And isn't it interesting to see now how the demographic of martial sports has so changed? I mean, I know there has been Japanese Muay Thai fighters for many, many years, but the way in which there are so many now, as opposed to any of the Japanese styles, the same with Taekwondo, the same with kickboxing, it's just become completely unilateral in terms of what sport is picked by any particular country or any particular practitioner. So here we have from the Czech Republic Petra Polak against Japanese fighter Magnum Sokai. Little bit of a height disadvantage for the Czech fighter. 177 centimeters. Little slip there from Sakai of Japan, who comes in at 180 centimeters. So Sakai with the red flash. Petra Polik. Polak with the blue flash. Interesting, very relaxed, the Japanese fighter. Very square on. Polak, nice guard. Nicely covered. Gets in, gets out. So a very relaxed opening to this. The fourth quarterfinals of the S1 Championships from the Rajamanan Stadium in Bangkok. It's a great, great WMC turn up for the books. Vice President Stephen Fox here. WMC promoter from the UK, Ali Jacko is here. Ali Jacko, responsible for so many great Muay Thai and fight promotions in the UK. A relentless promoter of Muay Thai in the UK and indeed of events, great, great events. Ali Jacko always looking to maintain the high reputation of the sport. We've got WMC board members, Patrick Krushank from Australia, loads of fighters, Luke Kempson from Australia, Peter Crook, Crookies here, and Alex Daly from England, Craig O'Flynn, Neve Griffin from Ireland, and uh, up to mischief and making a lot of noise and self-publicity. Well, you've guessed it. It can only be the one and only Sandy Holt. So they're all here for this. And what a night. The crowd here in Thailand, so appreciative enjoying this rare opportunity to see so many foreign fighters in the ring so we go to round two petra polak czech republic in the blue corner magnum sakai of japan in the red every fight has really been a war of attrition Really hard, gritty stuff, and you can see what we're talking about. 
But that said, the standard has just been so high. Good clean strikes, perfectly executed, and continuous fighting. And I have to say that that's the one thing that marks this tournament out, is the fact that the fighting has just been so continuous. When the action slows down because of clinching, that's when you tend to lose a little bit of interest in what's going on, but this has just been full throttle. And in fact, I think this is what has uh, marked the S1 tournament alone from probably other Thai tournaments, and that is the obvious emphasis by the referee that the action should be continuous. And that indeed is what makes K1 so great, the no clinching rule, that the action is full on from the beginning with no, <laughs> no respite. And this has been certainly that. Well, Polak getting a little too acquainted with the gloves of Magnum Sakai. Good handwork. He moves well, Sakai. Slipping an awful lot of the shots from the Czech fighter. And uh, getting profit on the counter. Polak in close proximity in the clinches, trying to step up the ante. Score away with the knees. But the distance between these two men, quite a lot. There's a lot of ground to cover before you hit something. Magnum Sakai using his range. Oh, it slips a nice little left uppercut in there. And that nice high kick. Sakai really having the best of it here. Getting tagged there. But the crowd responding to the strikes of Sakai. Downstairs with the thigh kick. Responded by Polak. And again, Polak targeting that left leading leg of Sakai. There's the end of the second. So Sakai is showing an awful lot of grit and determination here. Well, the third and final now. In this, the quarterfinals. We know John Wayne Parr is through. We know Skabowski's through. We know the Thai fighter Nguyen Trakonpur Muang Ubon is through. Unlucky there for Ole Larsen. Just a narrow victory there. On points for Nguyen Trakon for Muang Ubon. But what will be the decider here? Petra Polak of the Czech Republic with the blue flash against Magnum Sakai of Japan with the red flash. A lot of grit, a lot of determination from the Japanese fighter. Very purposeful about his work. Although Polak's been busy, he's not really found an answer for the Japanese fighter. Good boxing skills, he moves well. Slipped an awful lot of leather that the Czech threw at him. Scoring away now.
Ooh, lovely front push. The cheap kick. Well, Polak now putting it together. Working combinations, left, right, upstairs. Then the low thigh kick downstairs. Good solid connections as well. You have to ask yourself, how fit are these guys? Athletes at this level, at top, top premium condition. Full throttle all the way. Well, Magnum Sakai, pushing forward, pushing forward. Narrowly missing a big right there. So, coming up to just half a minute to go of this, the third and final round. And they have stepped up the ante. The crowd cheering the strikes now. The judges looking for what's going to make the difference. I think the Japanese fight has probably done enough. Petra Polak waking up a bit in this round, but taking a good left there. Another good left. The high kick has been very active from Sakai. And in empty, whether it hits or not, the judges like to see it. Well, difficult to call again. Both men think they've done enough. But I would venture Magnum Sakai of Japan. It's probably burgled it. guess but Magnum Sakai the winner well don't go away because the best is yet to come we're having a short commercial break stay with us here on British Eurosport speak to you in a few Well, welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. This is the semi-final of the S1 Championships. Coming to you from the Rajamanan Stadium, second only to the Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. Well, this is going to be an MT fest. John Wayne Parr of Australia versus Jean-Charles Skabowski of France. Skabowski, tough, tough cookie indeed. But John Wayne Park, no walkover. So Wayne Park with the blue flash. Skabowski with the red flash. Well, we've seen these men in action in the quarterfinals. Skabowski. Almost doing a demolition job on Surya Saw Pionchit of Thailand. The Thais don't come here to lose. Any MT fan will tell you that. So the Thais under a lot, a lot of pressure. Skabowski, big hitter. Look at him dropping the big white hands in there on John Wayne Parr. But he's so tactical. He's so cute. He's such a good, good tactician, John Wayne Parr. This is going to be a really, really exciting bout. Skabowski. Likes to knock, likes to dig in hard. John Wayne Park, equally capable of putting leather on chin. But great tactician. Look at that, sweeps the kick away, changes stance, counters. Make no mistake, very, very capable men indeed. And hard as nails. You have to be in this game. Oh, and John Wayne Park coming out the worst in that exchange. Skabowski dropping a few left-right combinations. Par not having the put down. Comes back. 
connects with the right two, three, four times. Skabowski moving back, thinking it's the last. Jean Wayne Parr powering forward. He's so steady, Skabowski, about his work. Almost like a metronome, he bangs out the left, bangs out the left. Then when the occasion presents, in comes the right. But he doesn't hurry, doesn't get excited, just continuously going about his work. But Parr, matching him, putting a right across, hitting him twice, connecting on the chin. John Wayne Parr, moving at the same speed, moving at the same tempo and applying the same pressure. Great right hand, and Skabowski throwing caution to the wind, no guard. He can't do that against a fighter like John Wayne Parr. Parr now stalking him. Well, the crowd on their feet here, and Skabowski taking incredible punishment. Sean Wayne Parr digging his heels in and saying, I'm not having it, I'm coming forward. Well, at the end of the second, Skabowski looks relieved. Sean Wayne Parr says yes. Look at that right, look at that right again, look at the third right, the fourth whistles by, the fifth touches. Skabowski throwing caution to the wind, not even defending any of it. And this is a testimony to the skill of John Wayne Parr. Look at how he reads it every time, eyes wide open, focused on the target, and he connects, almost running forward. Oh, this is Muay Thai at its very, very best. This is the creme de la creme. Quality, quality, pure nectar. Bunchu, that's what's written on the chest of Jean Wayne Parr. If you don't know what it means, go look it up. It's a great exercise. Jean Wayne Parr, known for his Y crew. The stylized Jean Wayne Y crew. We saw it earlier. Well, against, it just goes to show you the quality of Jean Wayne Parr against a fighter like Skabowski. Skabowski is a tough, tough cookie. But it's Jean Wayne Parr that's digging in the class, the tactics. Look at that. Misses the front roundhouse and goes in on the counter. Left right combination. The timing, the precision. And Skabowski covering up because uh, Jean Wayne Parr raining blows. Every MT fighter will know that when you're hot, you're hot. And there are times when you just cannot do a thing wrong. There are times when it flows, when it happens. Free the mind and the rest will follow. And Jean Wayne Parr is in the zone. Skabowski making a good comeback, getting the focus. But look at that high kick there from Jean Wayne Parr. He connects, and Skabowski now looking out over the gloves, not knowing where the strike will come from next. Still meeting two reds from Skabowski. Left, but he bangs a hard right in there. And I, for one, am not writing Skabowski off yet. But both these men can take a knock. They really can. John Wayne Parker takes some incredible punches directly on the button. It's what a true champion's made of. And I'm bound to say, and I defy anyone to argue with me, that the MT we're seeing here at this level is just astounding. It really is world class and is the flagship for this truly, truly athletic sport. Doesn't come any better. Oh, great right from Parr. Takes a straight left there, stops the advance. Skabowski bangs out the left again once, twice. And John Wayne Parr throws him to the ground, almost effortlessly. Cradled by the referee, the referee checks Skabowski's eyes.
Well, for any of you watching this, will agree with what MT fighters have been saying all along. This is such a tough game. And look how incredibly hard you have to be for this ring sport. And the Australian flag flying. Left, right, left, right. John Wayne Park comes through. It's the end of the second. The knee strike goes up. And Wayne Park knows he's got this. Look at that left, right combination. Then a right again. And then on the ropes. What brilliant, brilliant work from John Wayne Park. Clean punches, clean kicks. What a variation of strikes we're seeing. Moving forward all the time. Oh, and his form has risen throughout this contest. So this is the third and final. Jean Wayne Parr of Australia versus Jean Charles Skarbowski of France. And this is just going to be a slugfest. I can see it now. Skarbowski knows he's coming from behind the line. And Jean Wayne Parr is saying, well, if you're going to pile the pressure on, Bring it on, because I'm here waiting, and I will answer in kind. Oh, credit to Skabowski. I mean, he's relentless in coming forward, but that's it. That's it. A left, right, and Skabowski. Well, there's blood there. And you can make of that what you will, but that is a serious injury. Jean-Charles Skabowski with damage to the nose. It was a short right. Jean Wayne Parr of Australia pleases the crowd. What a great tactician. It's top, top, top banana. And look at that. Well, right cross wasn't fully extended. The full power connected, and you saw. So, semi-final number two. From Japan, Magnum to Sakai. From Australia. And from Thailand. Second semi-final. Nguyen Trakonpo, Muang Ubon. Muang Ubon playing matched against Magnum Sakai from Japan. Well, it's off to a furious start here. The last of the ties in this eight-man competition. We've seen Sakai. He's hard. Moves well. But the tie fighter looks to raise the pace here. And he has, he's fighting Southpaw and piling pressure on. And really, Magnum Sakai, un raining under blows there. And he did so well to turn and get out of the corner. But Nuentra Konpo Muangubon not taking any prisoners. Well, you saw a whole bout there in almost 15 seconds. Well, give it up for the, the Japanese fighter Sakai because he's back. But he very nearly got taken out there. So Noantrakorn, poor Muang Ubon, stamps his authority. Japanese fighter takes a standing count from that. And I suspect Noantrakorn, poor Muang Ubon, will smell blood and look to finish this. The ties are on their feet. Under incredible pressure, the Japanese fighter still comes back. But the tie really now... Pouring pressure on Sakai. Determination just to hang on in there. Well, the 
Thai fighter must sense he can finish this. Hanging in there. Just for a glimmer of hope. Sakai looking for time to recover. He may well have found it. That was an incredible onslaught from the Thai. Looking just a little bit puffed out. Couldn't finish it. Starts the attack again, but this time it's the Japanese fighter. And this time it's Magnum Sakai piling on pressure. Oh, this is an incredible evening of Muay Thai. Absolutely incredible. Well, Noantrakon takes his gum shield out. Has it replaced by the referee? Very unusual indeed. Well, it ain't over till it's over. And Magnum Sakai of Japan, after surviving that onslaught, well, you'll see for yourself. There's the left. There's the high kick. Well, this has become a real, real clash of wills here. Magnum Sakai said, I didn't come here to lie down. Nuang Trakunpur, Muang Ubon is saying, well, this is my home crowd. One of us has got to go, and I don't fancy it being me. But what an incredible recovery from Magnum Sakai. He's going to have to go some to make up what's been given away. But he's still there in front of the TIE fighter. Oh, and it's good work. Good variation there from the Japanese fighter. Tries to work on the inside. Short left, an uppercut. And he has got good boxing skills, Sakai. Brilliant recovery after taking a high kick, then that big left. But the tie fighter, Lemon Fresh. Being roughed up a little bit now. Nuang Trakunpo, Muang Ubon. You know, I have to say that every bout in this has just been quality, pure quality. Really tough, really gritty. We've seen good, clean strikes. I mean, it's just excellent, excellent stuff. And for me, this is what gives a sport a good reference when you see quality fights like this, where the focus is there, the strikes are there, and you can see at this level what MT fighters aspire to. Well, for my money, Nuantrakan Poor Muang Ubon has let Magnum Sakai off the hook. He's let him live to fight another day, and he survived the second. Well, the third and final, this is the decider. And look at the Japanese fighter, Sakai. He stepped up to the mark now, livened it up. Started to lift his pace up the ante. And it's Sakai that's moving forward. Nuang Trakorn, poor Muang Ubon. Well, controversy now.
That's it. It's all over. I think we'll call that decisive enough. Oh, we waited. Well, it's hard to see what made the connection. But whatever it was, it was enough to do the job. So, no Antrang for Muang Ubon. All right, this is the cherry on the cake. The final. Five three-minute rounds. John Wayne Parr of Australia with the blue flash on the yellow trunks. Nguang Trakon Poor Muang Ubon with the red flash on the yellow trunks. They've gone through an immense array of gritty and tough fighters, but they both stand here now with victory in sight. This is the S1 Championships from the Rajamanan Stadium, Bangkok, Thailand. I'm Will Vanders, John Wayne Parr, 68 fights. 54 wins, 28 KOs. He's the ISKA middleweight world champion. He's the IMF middleweight champion. I will remind you again that John Wayne Parr, along with Jean-Charles Skabowski, who has just recently signed to the Super League, will be fighting in Germany live on Eurosport on Saturday, October the 23rd. So MT fans, apart from tuning in to Fight Club on a regular basis, mark this one in your fight diary. The Super League live from Germany on British Eurosport, Saturday, October the 23rd. That's to come. This is now. And what a clash of titans this is going to be. Jean Wayne Parr, having come this far, will not want to go out. Luang Trakon Poor, Muang Ubon in front of a Thai crowd here in Bangkok will also not want to go out. Something's got to give. The potential for excitement for this Muay Thai mayhem is absolutely luge. So, scheduled for five, and I would point out uh, as advised earlier during this evening's entertainment under the S1 rules the elbow is allowed but only in the final bout so full MT rules here and it's just easier to tell you what's not allowed you're not allowed to bite you're not allowed to snap the eyes you're not allowed to spit at your opponent you're not allowed to stick out your tongue or strike with the head and you can't use unsuitable words during the fight everything else fair game so both these fighters now getting their head down going to work psyched up but there is an element of tiredness here they've both had huge huge bouts to get here John Wayne Parr looking as if he's enjoying himself look at the elbow go in there oh that was sweet and we were just blindsided to that but John Wayne Parr brought the elbow in so the potential here for seriously radical rough and tumble so it can all happen and it probably will. John Wayne Parr working so well. And he's so respected here in Thailand. But Nguang Trukun Poor, Nguang Obon looking very relaxed. Just barely out of the ring. After his victory over the Japanese fighter, Magnum Sakai. Very difficult to see what strike puts Sakai down in that bout. But thankfully for Nuantakonpo Muang Ubon, 
He went down, not forcing the tie to go the distance because he's straight back in the ring against John Wayne. Now don't forget, this is a pyramid contest. These fighters have had quarterfinals, they've had semi-finals. This is the final, they'll have picked up injuries. Great hand work there from John Wayne Park. They'll have picked up injuries. Fatigue will be setting in. The muscles will be cramping. But they've got to dig deep, summon up. And that's exactly what they're doing. And the added use of the elbows here, well, the potential, very huge. Very huge indeed. Oh, John Wayne Parr, right then a left, makes good connections. He's got a great look on his face, hasn't he? No entra conformo angle one. He's just got that weathered face of, oh no, not another round. But uh, <laughs> he must enjoy it, otherwise he wouldn't be there. John Wayne Park, successful with the throw, upends the tight. Well, the crowd on their feet, over 10,000 people rammed into this stadium. Lots of faces here. Ali Jacko, Peter Crook. Up to mischief. Sandy Holt. And not to be missed. Sponsored by Mr. Songchai Ratanuban, the foremost WMC member in Thailand. To coincide with a celebration for his birthday. Some of the best talent from around the world. I mentioned it earlier. Well, look at John Wayne Parr, he's so confident. He finishes every round, hands up, gives a punch up to heaven as if to say, yes. That'll do. And he really has had the best of it. Well, throws the tie to the ground. Yeah, I've said it earlier on. Some would say the S1, what's that all about? Well, it's not my analysis of it. It's in the official literature. It's a humorous reference to the K1. So, two of a scheduled five, full MT rules, elbow strikes allowed, and everything else in between. John Wayne Park of Australia against Nuantra Kanpur, Muang Ubon. Both men keep such good composure. I mean, this is real class. John Wayne Parr resisting that throw with every ounce of effort in his body. Tricky customer, Nuantra Korn, Poor Muang Ubon. Fights unorthodox, leads with the right. But John Wayne Park getting to work there. Beautiful left, right, brings the knee up. Oh my goodness, the crowd is screaming every time a strike. The elbow goes in, twice it goes in. Nuantra Korn, Poor Muang Ubon falls foul of the elbow strike. John Wayne Park using it to such judicious effect. And just watching this, my goodness, if you're watching it at home and you, fr and you tape it and you freeze frame every strike, it's classic textbook stuff. So clean, so precise. And if you could freeze a moment in time, it would just be like a diagram in a book that was showing you how to deliver a, a, an empty strike. It's so, so clean.
Well, no substitute will do. This is the real McCoy. This is full, fat, empty. No holes barred. And just look at the dance. Just look at the dance. These two men engaged in a battle of wills, notwithstanding a battle of physical prowess. Superb. Well, the dance continues. Scheduled for five. This is number three. Jean Wayne Pa, Nuantra Kampur, Muang Ubon. Well, if you've just joined us, you're watching the final of the S1 Muay Thai Championships. The newest championships to take place in the MT Arena from the Rajamanan Stadium in Bangkok. And John Wayne Parr again throws his Thai opponent, Nuanta Kampur Muang Ubon, to the ground. And John Wayne Parr really has to be and signify the essence of what MT is all about. And the ties, well, in Bangkok, in this stadium, to see a Thai fighter being edged out of the running, being outclassed by a non-Thai. MT fighters know how tough the ties are, how good they are, how reluctantly they relinquish any kind of ground, particularly to a non-Thai. But John Wayne Parr, the essence of this incredibly tough fighting sport, it has a history that dates back thousands and thousands of years as a fighting style of the Thai army many people think that MT just a ring sport for entertainment but in actual fact it is a traditional martial art used in battle many centuries ago throughout the years oh spinning back elbow and then the front elbow john wayne parra stepped up another gear well the boy is on fire one elbow two elbows spinning back elbow and one has to question how much of this nuantra kanpur muang ubon can take well he's got that weathered look about him that battle worn expression but he's carried that from the first round. John Wayne Parr. That look of, well, it's my birthday and I get to fight as well. Enjoying this. Look, toying now with the Thai fighter in front of a Thai crowd. And look at the confidence of the boy. Well, I hope the slow-mo comes back and shows us those elbow strikes, so very rare. One. Notwithstanding the knee strikes. Well, <laughs> ringside, they're going berserk. Uh, yeah, I'm not a betting man myself, but as you can imagine, in Thailand, there's probably a few bark knocking around on Nuantra Kanpur Muang Ubon, and people are screaming here, saying, pull your finger out. He's only a fresh-faced kid. But boy, 
Would that be a big mistake to let it go at that? Well, it's not over till it's over. John Wayne Parr of Australia really romping home to victory. If it goes to points, there's no doubt in my mind. And that's what makes the rest of this bout so interesting because now Luang Trakonpur, Muang Uban knows something radical has got to happen. So what has he got in the box of tricks? Family of John Wayne Parr there. Well, what better inspiration to keep you going? As I've said, they're all in here tonight. Ali Jacko. Pete Crook. Oh, and there's the elbow strike from the tie now. It's short, it's sharp. Well, John Wayne Park, look at the defensive game now he's playing. Moving back, keeping the guard up, countering with the elbow. And the elbow, so synonymous with Thai boxing. It must be so difficult to fight without using it under modified Thai rules. John Wayne Park piling the pressure on now. Pigskin flying a plenty. Great combinations. John Wayne Park digging in. Really, really putting some hard bangs and knocks together for Nuang Trakunpur, Muang Uban. Oh, and he just looks so comfortable. What a clash of spirit, what a clash of minds. Neither man will be dominated. But he's such a, a, a tactician and technician, John Wayne Park. He really, really can turn it on, turn it off, as and when it's needed, and that's what makes a true champion. Look at the elbow strikes going in. I mean, they're hitting Nuan Trakonpur, Muang Oban's arm, but uh, that's taking the juice out of the bicep muscle. Oh, great left-right combination. Goes straight through the guard of the tie. And such a show of respect. And John Wayne Parr up to his antics. He knows he's done enough. Just loosens up, uses up a bit more of the clock. Now he's going to work. He knows that there's nothing the tie can do. And this is what the tie is like. They want to be entertained. This is not just about blood, guts and glory. It's also about raising a smile and raising a cheer and raising your profile. And look at John Wayne Park. He dances around the ring. Ali-esque, really. Knowing that he's done enough. And he has. As the clock ticked away, John Wayne Parr knew he'd done enough to snatch victory in front of this Thai crowd at this, the Rajamanan Stadium, second only to the Lumpini. Well, you'd think he'd show a little bit more excitement at having won. With a first prize of a trophy from the Thai Prime Minister. Well, there's a million baht. One million baht. And a world champion belt. At